<clears throat> okay, so um, tonight we're going to get a chance to talk about my time out in Utah at the Southern Utah Builder Retreat. And I went, actually went back, Laura Whipperman, and I looked at the text you had sent with some of the questions that you had asked to kind of like get a feel for what kinds of things I might share. So I think I might start with that a little bit. Um, and then um, your questions lead well into like maybe some of the meteor stuff. Um, and so one of the first questions was, why were you invited to this retreat? Which is like such a funny question because we're all still kind of wondering that. But no, I, I mean, I have a little bit of insight into that. So basically they were seeking out leaders who had hit higher ranks, mostly diamonds, but there were some golds and platinums who hadn't ranked in a while. Like you couldn't have hit that max rank. It had to have been over a year. Um, but you still had to have a certain amount of enrollments. It was 12 in the past calendar year. You um, couldn't have dipped below silver. So those were the people who got the application, but there was also a certain like dynamic going on where um, like blue and presidential diamonds, like the, uh, one of the incentives or things that they were able to earn was being able to send somebody to these retreats. So they had some pull to and who was there, which I think is totally appropriate um, in how that went down. Um, so let's see, that was who was there. So I was invited because I haven't ranked to diamond since July of 2018. I had to look it up, July of 2018. Um, and so that was one of the reasons why I was, I met those different qualifications. So her second question was, what was the purpose or main point of the retreat? Um, in my own words, I feel like it was really to like invest in us and to connect with us and inspire us too. I think there was a lot of like showing that we still have value, even though like most of us showed up kind of beaten down, um, by ourselves. Um, so I think really powerful connections were made and they knew, they knew if they put us all in a room that that was going to happen. Like I can honestly say guys, the number of times I've said this, so mark this down. I can honestly say that like, I hope to some see some of these people again. Like I really enjoyed who I got to connect with, which is like, I don't really say that. <laughs> so that's saying something. Um, Laura Whipperman asked like who else was there, you know, dish on them a little bit. Some of the names you might know, some you might not. And it's okay, don't feel bad if you don't know who. But so Dana Moore was there as a speaker. Stephanie Fritz, who writes essential oils for pregnancy, birth and babies. Um, she was there. Um, obviously, Emily and Corey Wright were there. Um, account managers were there. Uh, Jasmine Jaff Jaffarelli, I feel like some of you know her. Kelly Wilson spoke. Um, and then Holin Nakata, who maybe you recognize his name, maybe even off of Facebook, but he's um, he and his wife were there, and they're really great. Um, Laura asked, what were my major takeaways? And I think that was kind of hard to answer, but at the end of the day, I felt really cared for. Um, and... Emily Wright said at the, at like the closing, I'm going to call it the closing ceremony. It wasn't, but that's what it was. Um, that it was really like a no strings attached kind of thing that they did for us. Um, of course they would love for us to go home and take action and people will in their own way. But I appreciated the sentiment that they were like, I didn't have to like write my name or my rank goal in blood or anything. Um, like it was just really, I think generous that way. Um, I loved this speaker so much. I'll highlight some of them. No, um, in the bedroom or you'll have to look around for it. I got to finish this. Okay. Okay. Um, but the bottom line is the speakers that they showed, it was like people that are still doing this and doing it successfully. Some are brand new, some are old leaders who have re-engaged in a different way. And some of them were like leaders who have never stopped. They've never taken their foot off the gas pedal. Um, and I think the reminder that we all build in our own way. Um, and when we stop doing it our own way and showing up as ourself is when we lose that momentum and the fun. Um, there was talk about like the different kinds of belief and checking in on that. Like, do we believe in ourselves? Do we believe in the company? And do we leave in the, believe in the product? Um, and so I, I've, you know, if I look at those three things for me, my belief in myself kind of pre-retreat wasn't really great. Like, can I do this? Do I have what it takes? Why didn't it work? Leaders maybe aren't getting the results that they want. Some leaders have walked away. You know, it's just all rolls around in your brain. Um, can I really make money with this? Can I help somebody who wants to make money with this? Um, my belief in the company, I felt like I wanted to go and I wanted to find out like 
I hate to say what's really going on with doTERRA, but we're just so far removed. We all know that. Um, and I feel like I walked away with a much better understanding of like the stability and the growth of doTERRA and that they're like, so not concerned. No one's like, oh my goodness, what are we going to do now? Like they've got it all figured out. Um, it's all systems go and they're doing what they always do well and for, you know, changing and pivoting the things that they need to. Um, and then the third one is belief in the products. And I just have to laugh in this. Like I believe in the products for myself, like totally, totally. But if I were honest, like about my belief at large, like it's not very strong right now. So look, my mom for the other day, um, my mom the other day ran into somebody who was in pain, was like, I can help you with oils. Bottom line, she was out of town. So I'm the one who dropped the oils off. And I'm kind of like, I really hope these help you. <laughs> not really. But I was like, okay. Um, and they totally helped him. And they're like, we want to tell our friend, like our friend wants your number and all these things. You know what I mean? So just like those kinds of things dip when you take your foot off the, the gas pedal. So a check-in for me thinking was like a really good way and a really kind of concise thing to be like, okay, these three things, they need some attention, you know, and we all know that taking action builds the belief in those areas and the confidence. So those were some of my takeaways um, when I just like, without even looking at my notebook, thought about those things. Um, so then Laura Whipperman asked, what takeaways are there for us as leaders? And I feel like, so I do have something for you guys. I feel like coming home from this retreat reminded me of this like kind of age old dilemma in my brain. What am I going to share? How will I share it? What's the right delivery system? How much is too much? And it's kind of like, a thing that I do in my brain and it, it can be kind of crippling. Um, and I take ownership for it. Like nobody is like doing that. I'm doing that to my, in my own brain. So I ended up making a Google doc and we'll flip to that in a second. Um, and I just like, before I flip over to that, I want to say that in like the past, it's been 11 years. I had my 11 year anniversary on the 28th. So really 10 years of building doTERRA. Um, I think, we all have like such unique journeys in it. And we've learned a lot of things along the way. And when I think back to that surge of 2018 and what kind of happened there, somewhere along the way, I got in my head that I'm like this umbrella or maybe a funnel who like takes all the info out there, right? I've got input and activator. And then I like put it into bite-sized pieces and systems and step-by-step -step processes and I simplify it and then I hand it off to people. And I, I do think there's value in that, um, but I think ultimately it put like a people in a place of depending on me for certain things. And like, I, again, I did that. Um, and so I like walked away from the treat and I was like, it's time, it's time for a new flow of business. And how are we going to onboard people and take care of current customers? And we can all row in the same directions. And, you know, you can picture my brain doing that. But the more I sat with it, I was like, I just don't think I want to do that. I'm not sure that that's the right way for me to come back and, you know, reassess the pause button. Um, I don't even know if it's right for everyone. So that's why I compiled this document of like what I learned and the links you there's like links in there that give you access. You won't even believe you won't even believe the links I got while I was out there. It was worth it alone to get some of those links. Um, you can go through it. You can decide what what's best for you, what you want to graft into your business, what you don't. And like I said, like a takeaway was that everyone gets to do this business how they want to do it. And that's the beauty of it, right? And I don't want anyone feeling like they have to wait on me for answers. I love sharing what I learned. I love being able to offer that up. But I feel like each one of us has what it takes to do this. Um, and we each have our own gifts and goals and hours available in the day and et cetera. So let me get to that Google Doc and hopefully I have it here somewhere. Um, do Does anyone have any questions before I flip over to this? Oh, Miranda just, just texted. I'm watching for her. She's on her way into the room. Yeah, I just admitted her in. Okay. I was like, I wonder how long. Okay, so now I can share my screen. Hey, Mer. Hmm. <clears throat> So what I did is I actually like titled this document. Can you guys see that? Okay. I titled it a way forward and there were different words that were shared that I thought were really like to me profound for like, if, you know, if, and how we move forward, what does it look like? And the words were joyful, 
sustainable, peaceful, and it's not as catchy, but I added in your zone of genius. Cause I think that's really important. I think that's super critical. So I just kind of highlighted here some of the takeaways from each speaker. Um, so Emily Wright started us out um, like as far as like we had speakers on day one in the morning and day two in the morning. And there were other people who spoke at different times, but this was like the meat. So Emily Wright kind of opened it up. And one of the things um, that she talked about is a juniper tree. So there are juniper trees all over the property. I felt like such an idiot, guys. They were like um, the first night we're sitting around the campfire and they were like, who here has seen a juniper tree? And I'm like, no, 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 I don't think I've seen a juniper. And they're like, they're literally all around us. And I was like, oh yes, I've seen one. So they had actually like cut off a branch and tucked it in our notebook. And they gave us a bottle of juniper and they talked about how juniper trees, when like conditions are harsh, something has transpired, they can like cut off flow to a limb and it like essentially dies but the tree, it's still alive. It's just cut off flow to that branch in order to survive. And when they're in a better spot, when the threat isn't there, when they've healed a little bit, they can turn life back to that branch and bring it back to life. And so the question was like, what branches have we cut off just to survive? Like we're just surviving here. And where is it maybe time to just let the life flow back into that branch? And I thought that was a really profound, beautiful. It literally everywhere you walked on the property, it smelled like juniper. It was like really permeated the air. Um, so that was, I think, thought provoking and worth sharing. Um, I will say here, I just wrote, I didn't actually write like all the details, but I, as you saw in the pictures, I ended up in Emily's car often. And there were some really interesting conversations about somebody was like, tell me how you even got into Young Living in the first place. And we heard like from beginning to everything, like all the things. And um, we heard somebody asked about like, I, I don't even remember. I think it's because the whoever was the CEO at um, Young Living is now um, involved in one of the companies where the happy juice is that you see some of the higher up doTERRA leaders, you know, going off to not all just some, you know, you see people making decisions. And um, Emily totally spoke to that. And she was like, Oh, she it was so interesting. But in a nutshell, she said, um, those companies are in a not great place and they've pivoted to a 90% payout. So they're paying people big right now and there's nothing really residual. And she said, some of those people who have jumped, like their husbands are like in my office begging me, like, can we undo what we've done? Like, can we please undo this? We've, this is terrible. Like what, this was a terrible decision my wife made. Can you please help us? So I think that, um, and the, the conversation was really even and level. Like, I don't feel like she was poking at anyone, but it was really interesting to see like behind the scenes, I think of some of the things we just see social media or we see talked about. So I thought that was worth sharing. Um, Callie Wilson, who remembers watching, like learning how to teach a class from watching her with her little short hair cut. Yes. And like, just, so she is in a zone where she had to hit the pause button and she's back now and she's fiery and she's reengaged in really great ways. And she is the one who said, I'm doing doTERRA again, but only the joyful parts. Um, and I really love that. That's what she's saying to her leaders. So she actually was asked to speak in the UN about like an, on a presentation about poverty. And she um, shared with us some of the slides um, because she, one of the things that she's passionate about is like the that women, um, female entrepreneurs make such a big difference. Like when they go are going into a country that needs um, help, a lot of help, the, the, the main way to help is actually to empower the women, not typically the men. I'm not like a man hater or anything, but they're the ones who are really making the difference. Um, and if you want to look it up, tabletop entrepreneurism, it's really um, remarkable. Um, but she's like, what other business can you start for $35 and do whatever you want? You know, we're the CEO. Um, she's teaching her team how to be doTERRA entrepreneurs and not just doTERRA hobbyists, like to know your job, not just to like spend all the money you make to be kind of smart about it. Um, and also the reminder that like some of, some of us might feel like, or at large, like, 
I mean, like, what's this paycheck really worth staying around for? Like, I don't really understand it. And if you look at it as a residual, it's an asset that you've built, right? That's paying you. What kind of money would you have to have in the bank? So we've talked about this. Remember David Ellis's presentation that I think I shared, but what would you have to do to have in the bank to be getting that money residually? So she's like, if you have to go, if it's like tight, go get a part-time job. You are just like building an asset. We are building an asset right now. This is like, we don't do it for three months we do it for life we're building towards retirement um and then um, this is what she's saying to people she's recruiting which i just think this is interesting i can help you build a doTERRA asset and we will grow it and protect it until you die and then it will grow to your go to your children just like the long vision of um that i thought was really interesting so get one percent every day one percent better every day don't get so emotionally attached to show up and have fun she had some really good wisdom um lindsey norman who knows that name who's familiar with that name besides melissa so she and i she's apparently a bethel volleyball player we both played at bethel i like identified right away i was like there's something going on here anyway not the same years as me she did norwex for 10 years prior built to the top and um, she was appropriately wooed over um, through a series of things. And she's been do doing doTERRA for 13 months and she's diamond. She's like on fire. She, so she's our like, she was this really beautiful example of like, it still works. Look at her go. Like she was just so fun. And she, what I really loved about her perspective is she had come from a really burned out MLM place, direct marketing place, and has completely turned that around. And before she said yes to doTERRA, she said, I like what you guys are telling me, but I'm going to go around to all the other companies, every single one. And I'm going to make sure that like, this is really the best one. And she did that. And she chose doTERRA and she said, you guys don't know, you have forgotten what a good thing you have. Like you've just forgotten. You have no idea how good this is. Um, and so, um, yeah, let's see. She had some really good lines about, um, I don't know, just not feeling um, worthy all the time, but just showing up and getting it done. She's the systems girl. So she's the one who just kind of like lit my fire. I really like what she's done with her systems and she shared it. I have it all in a Google folder. It's down at the bottom of this. Um, and it's a really quite brilliant. It's clearly her zone of genius. Um, and I think there's a lot of good things there. A lot of good things there, like what she shared. Um, there's some other nuggets here. I think if I were to just really, um, this is very simple explanation of her process, but she said, so Amy is the name of the person who enrolled her. And she was like, Amy, I don't want to sell oils. I don't want to sell oils. And Amy goes, that's fine. Our top products are not oils. They're supplements. And, uh, Lindsay was like, what do you mean? And so she explained to her, so Lindsay teaches wellness workshops and it's all about lifelong vitality and meta power. It's all about foundational health and metabolic health. And oils are, oils are just like the cherry on top. They come. She's like, I do not want to have to fight off people's pre-existing opinions about what oils are best, what oil companies are best, how you take them, how you don't take them. I don't want to deal with that. I'm, I'm over that. Um, and so she focuses on the other things and has really cast a vision for health with that and has done a great job. So, um, I thought that was really good and she's got really good nuggets. So you'll see her links. Dana Moore, Dana Moore kind of brought down the house. I think she was really nervous following Lindsay Norman, but she was great. Um, she, so she talked about finding solutions when you have a problem. And her example was she literally stood up there. We've got like all doTERRA staff in the room, Emily Wright sitting right there. And she was like, I woke up on April, you know, in April. And she was like, I saw citrus twist with the product of the month. And she was like, dumb, dumb, dumb. This is dumb. I'm calling corporate. I'm calling who's ever in charge of this. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. This is just dumb, dumb, dumb. And she's like, so I could have stayed there or I could have found my way out of it. So she's like, I decided she's like, actually it was one of my leaders who was like, I love citrus twist who changed my perspective on it and helped me find a solution. She's like, Dana Moore is like, I actually placed two orders this month to get two bottles of citrus twist. I kind of fall in love with it. And she said, then I ran a report. What she's doing to find a solution is she ran a report to figure out who got the free 
Citrus Twist, and she's doing an exclusive call for them. She did an exclusive call for them in April as like a cool thing that they got to do for getting their free bottle of Citrus Twist. So she's like, okay, we are going to like pivot and come up with a solution here. So that was just an example. Um, she talked about how back in the day, we didn't have to create our own momentum because doTERRA did it for us. We were just like riding the wave. And I think that's really true. And then doTERRA has leveled off, which is normal. And she said, so many of us are whining. I'm not saying this to you guys. I'm like, I, I understand what she's saying. People are like kind of whining, like what's going on or like, what is doTERRA done? And she's like, this gap is really good for us. We have time to catch up. We have time to work on our personal development kind of level up a little bit um, and work on those things. Um, some things she said that really um, resonated with me, like we stayed, like, I feel like I stayed consistent as long as I possibly could. And I just was like empty. I ran out. I couldn't do it. Um, she talked about making sure that you say I get to instead of I have to, like kissing Zella to bed tonight, like mommy gets to get on a call. That's why I can't lay with you for five minutes, you know, and said, I have to get on a call and watching your verbiage. Um, she was the one who talked about the areas of belief. Um, miracle morning. She said when they got up on the stage at leadership to do miracle morning, she was like, mindset, hate this. I'm not even staying for this. And she's like, miracle morning has been such a game changer. She and her husband do it together. And it has really, the mindset piece of it has been super impactful. She shared a really great, um, testimony about um she's trying to re-rank back to presidential and she's like january 15 enrollments by the 15th i'm gonna do it january 31st comes around she's got zero enrollments and because she's like february okay i'm gonna get 15 enrollments i'm gonna do it february comes and goes zero enrollments okay so now she's at leadership and she learns about miracle morning and she starts implementing that She's got nine, like nine enrollments pretty quickly. She's got 50,000 new followers on Instagram. She's like, okay, it was a mindset. Like I didn't actually believe that I could be presidential diamond again. And so she's like shifting that has created significant things for her. Um, she said that we're all tired of the hustle culture, but we were like hustling outside of our zones of genius. Like if we are showing up as ourselves, it won't seem so hard anymore. It won't seem so hustly. Um, she's like, we've all started an amazing business for $150 that's still paying us. Um, uh, being sure that you're authentic to yourself. Um, she said it's the sexiest tool you have. Um, so yeah, just, uh, I think she just, she was really good. Each was really good. She was the example to me of a leader who has never taken her foot off the gas pedal. She's just going, um, she's not burnt out. She's not paused. She's in it. Um, okay. Any questions about those speakers? And then I'll show you guys some of these, um, business ideas and links that I got. Okay. Um, First of all, thank you. Thank you for sharing all this. It's so amazing and valuable. Mm -hmm. Just love it. <laughs> Thanks, Lassen. Okay, so these here are some of the business ideas and some of these came, like some of these are things that I've been watching people do. Some are specifically from my time out there. Some are from leadership and conversations there. Um, so spa nights are not, is not a new concept, but people are still actively making great progress with the concept of a spa night. Um, Holly is a founder 2.0. I know her from kind of back in the day. And she's like, this is what my team and I do. We do spa nights. So it's not like a lost art. If that's like your zone of genius and you love doing that with people, spa nights, um, wellness workshops. This is the concept of what Lindsay Norman is doing, where she really focuses on, and she does them online and in person, um, lifelong vitality and meta power and casts a vision for better health, better energy, better mood, better sleep, and cast that vision, um, and gets people going on that wellness networking group. This was Dana Moore. So one of the things like Callie Wilson, finished her talk by being like, so what, one of the things she's doing for her leaders is like, uh, twice a month, she takes her leaders to <laughs> Natalie and Andy Goddard's house and they go to build a retreats there. And that's how she trains up her leaders. So then Dana stands up and she's like, I can't do that. 
And so I can either be like, well, I don't have access to things like that. I can't do that. Or she's like, what can I do? So Dana has created a wellness networking group and she went to kind of like some big heavy hitters down where she lives now in Florida, like estheticians, massage therapists, chiropractors, people like that. And was like, she plays this card where she's like, I don't know if you'd be interested. It might not really be your thing, but I'm going to create this um, wellness networking group. And we're going to like, you know, support each other. We're going to do a day together of some fun stuff. And people are like, of course I'm interested. Of course I'm interested. And so she, I think got like 12 of those women together and they did a day and they all kind of donated their services. So they had yoga for free and massages for free. And Dana did some oily things for free. And then they had a meal together and um, they each then had their 10 minute portion to share about their business. And now a lot of those businesses are using oils in them. And she connected into a really like significant um, like community of people that way. So a wellness networking group, how smart she just, she just made it up. She just made it up. People were like, didn't they ask for your credentials? And she was like, no. She's like, I'm just, they don't even care who I am. They're just like, yeah, of course, we'll come do that. So I thought that was really good. I feel like seasonal make and takes, what we learned, you know, I know we haven't done a ton of in-person events, but we've, in our recent ones, have been pulling people about why did you actually come? And people like to come to make stuff. They still like pretty labels. They still like making stuff. Um, and that. So I still think there's value in that studies and challenges. I also don't think that's like a lost like cause. I think people are like, Oh, you want to be part of a study or like to, you know, see how this oil works for me. Yes. It doesn't have to be some like big, you know, where you get 800 people in it. Maybe it can be product experience kits. I have to remember who is talking about that, but I like the idea of giving somebody a product experience. You know, we gave, you know, we sold those things for $10 and Melissa, your pants were probably still sore from all the filling of those things. You know what I mean? But people really liked being able to experience that. Um, this power me wellness assessment I mentioned, but being able to send your customers a wellness assessment and then dial in with them on what they're working on, I think is a valuable tool. Okay, are you ready for this one? You can, I, we've talked about this, but a reminder in your back office now, you can run top 10, <laughs> top 10 reports for your team. So you can find out what are the 10 products that your team is selling the most? What are the 10 products that they're buying the least? Um, you can run those kinds of reports like Dana running that report for the product of the month. Um, and if you don't know how to do it, I know not everyone has an account manager, but you can ask your account manager, just be like, run this report for me. And then you, maybe you want to educate really specifically to the people who are getting these products, or maybe, you know, I'm not selling any of these and I probably should be selling some of them. Maybe you want to teach about those. Um, so you can be really strategic with that. And that's why I put in the product of the month club or a call, something special you're giving to those people or doing for them. That's like, I see you, I notice you and being able to run a report on it. So nice. Um, refer a friend is not something that I would say that our team has like heavily utilized, but there are some teams that are like really crushing it with refer a friend. I met my, with my account manager and, um, she talked a little bit about, sorry, I think a lot of people are really using refer a friend to level up their summer plan. It's, um, and work with their, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, so sorry. Um, there's a really good video on, um, refer a friend that I can tag people. And if you're interested. Yeah. Um, thank you, mom. So it's just, it's something that if you're looking for a fresh spin on what you're doing or a way to even like vet people, like somebody who's a current customer is like, I kind of want to do this or whatever. Be like, let's get your link out. You know, let's send you, you know, 10 PB assist sachets and see how many people you can get them out to and how many, like set a little challenge for somebody, see if they can start using their link and helping them with that. Um, and then vendor events. So one of the women there has built her business exclusively on actually like running vendor events. That's what she does. Um, not necessarily what I aspire to do, but interesting concept. Um, but attending them and having a booth there, I know Laura Whipperman has been doing some of those and, um, experiencing that and 
has a, uh, I think, great vision for it. Um, but those are just like ideas, like, right, again, and this isn't like an exhaustive list, I realize. Um, this is Lindsay Norman's system. So if you go to this Google Drive, you're going to see a lot of her stuff. She's got a YouTube channel, I would pay attention to it. If you like, if you're curious about what she's doing and all that, she's got tons of videos. She doesn't call them business opportunity calls. She calls them learn more. Do you want to learn more? Um, just learn more calls. And she does them once a month. And she doesn't have separate training times for her builders. She trains them by immersion. Like we're going to teach this class, all six of us together, and we're going to learn together. So it's not a separate thing that she's doing. Um, she's got her onboarding call recorded. Um, and then this, this is just like actually worth going and looking. So somebody shared this. I honestly feel like I, I, it's fine that I'm recording pretty significant. So Holland and his wife have been like organizing convention videos since 2017. So they're like organized, look at like they're in there, like the, okay, you want to know about lifelong vitality pack and what is it, but like, boom. Okay, fine. Fiber nutrition. Look at all this. Look at all this. <laughs> Single oils, physician panels. Um, so many things. So those are that, like, that's in there. I, we've decided that it was worth going just, just to get that vault of videos. Um, but I wanted you guys to see that too. Um, okay. I'm going to stop sharing for a question or for a second. Uh, questions on that. I know it's like a fire hose of information, but it was a retreat. Yeah, Amy, I put this in the chat, but we can't uh, copy and highlight and copy from your screen share. So if you could put those links, if you want to share those with us. I'm going to share the whole Google Doc. Who are? Okay. Yep. Awesome. It's going to be all that, yours. I think that would be super helpful. And um, I really feel that there's a lot of value in what you're sharing with us um, just to kind of re-inspire us or help us think of a uh, new avenue, you know, to jumpstart our businesses again. So thanks. Thanks. Um, yes, that document, um, I don't know how to open up the chat. Isn't that so weird? Um, there it is. Was I made it just for you guys. So it's all yours. There it is. Um, but yeah, I think it's just kind of like, we've all been in different places, you know, over the past year and a half, two years, but it's just kind of like a good, really wonderful reminder of, yeah, the different ways to do it. And of what, like, you can look at it fresh, you know, none of us, you know, everyone that was out there had been probably doing it for seven plus eight plus, you know, we were all in some of, you know, mostly in the teens of years that they've been doing it for. And, um, just like a lot of really good ideas, a lot of really good. One lady was just taking entries out of her journal. She keeps like notes of like oil thing, oily things that are happening that are good. And she created like, um, for her, it was an email, um, newsletter, but it could be text. It could be whatever. And she called it miracles in the mundane. And it was like, this is what the oil did for me today. And people are like, oh my gosh, I forgot to use my so-and-so or like, oh, my dad should be using that for such and such. Like we just like, I think forget. Um, so, oh, Anne says she remade Lindsay's class and shared it with us. Perfect. Um, Dear, the only other, I know it gets late when we do this. So the one other thing that I had toyed around with doing, um, oh, and I want to say this really quickly before I talk about the activity that I had considered is that Lindsay Norman is definitely like, she is the vision holder, but she's created systems. So like people aren't dependent on her. People know if I've done a next is B and C and they know how to follow the path. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, but one of the things is she like, we'll see like, okay, this is like her leader now has a group of people. And she's like, this is your pod. Like, this is your pod. What do you want to be called? What do you want to do? How often do you want to meet? Um, how long are you going to meet for when during the day? Um, are you going to like, they are creating their own. So I think what, um, I don't want to lose meeting altogether. That's not what I'm saying. I want to encourage you that if there's like a pod of people or if there's somebody who you feel like we row in the boat super well together, 
then you should pay attention to that and maybe be like, yeah, I, um, I know like Emily was in my downline, but we had fun teaching like babies classes, you know, back in the day, sometimes just like shifting your brain just this much of like, oh, what if I met with so-and-so once a month and we were like collaborated on that forward trajectory. So I would encourage you to think that way too. Um, and not that you're selling yourself short, but, um, I don't know. I think the pod concept is kind of interesting. There are no sacred cows. We can do it however we want. You know, we don't have to do monthly calls for the rest of our lives, but we can. We don't have to do the third Monday of the month to fill eternity, but we can. I think there's like good things. Um, Lindsay Norman does CE once a quarter, and then she launches a 30 day challenge out of it. So she talks about uh, personal care products and then she launches into a 30-day campaign and then they've got like static as in they're probably just talking in their group about the next thing and then they do um a ce like workshop and then they dump them into a 30-day training so so many different ways so many different ways okay i digress here's the activity um i'm gonna say it's oh do you guys want to take four more minutes to do the activity together or would you rather that I explained it to you and you can do it on your own free time? Um, four minutes, whatever Laura Whipperman says, Sonia. She's not sure. Four minutes. Sonia's going to give me four minutes her time because she loves me. She Let's loves me. Let's do four minutes. Ready, set, go. Okay, ready, set, go. Take your piece of paper. You better grab mine. And I'm really going to set a timer, so we're going to hold to it. I want you to write down on one side, here goes our two minute timer, um, all the things, all the excuses, all that you don't have going for you, everything that's working against you. We're gonna do that for a minute or two. Okay, some of us are still writing. That's fine. We're getting closer to two minutes, maybe a minute and a half. Then what you do is you flip over your paper and you write down all that you do have going for you. I want to share. I really like this one.
Okay, so as you finish that up, and you know, obviously, each side, we could have used more time on either side. But the bottom line is this, our brains really like to live in the first side that we filled out, like, that's where we like to hang out. It's easy. That's our mode. But what if what we could do is to teach our brain to live on the second side that we wrote of what we do have going for us, um, we would move so much farther um, in the direction that we want to go. Um, so just the encouragement to stay in that brain space. And what I'll leave you with is this actually I didn't hear at the retreat, but I don't even know where I heard it, but I think it's a really good point. Like if you have like it might not even be a doTERRA dream, but if you have a dream or like something inside of you or a vision for something, like it wasn't like just some random incident that you have it, like that it shouldn't be there. Like if that's your dream, like then you have, and I don't mean like pump you up, like you have what it takes to do, but like God put that there. And so therefore he can help you. I don't mean to be like super successful and whatever you want, but that dream, that dream that you want to do, like it was from him. And he can help take you to it um, and to make that happen. And again, whether that's a doTERRA dream or not, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's what what drives you. And so uh, I just wanted to kind of leave you with that thought. So that's what I know. Utah 2024. <laughs> Was that the year? <laughs> oh. Okay, so I will share some of these links in the text group. Um, so we, everyone can stay in the know there. And then, um, we've got oils, of the Bible on the 20th. I'll stay on for anyone who has questions, but if you have to sign off, thanks for being on. I hope you have a great evening. Thank you. I've got, I really appreciate your time and your effort in putting that together for us. Um, and I'm sure everyone does. And I also have some people asking for the recording. So, um, people want to, um, I know 